Hello and welcome to the Attunement Emissary Legacy Series. My name is Gary Goodhue and I will be your host. Go ahead and click the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications. We got a great episode here for you. It's talk number four by Martin Cecil in Approach to Christmas. These were copyrighted in 1978 by Emissaries of Divine Light, and I have the honor of being able to read them so that we can share them out with the world. These teachings are so needed to free up the experience of Christ, specifically within ourselves. And this talk is all about being pure in heart. So I hope you enjoy these words by Martin Cecil, read by me. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for that awareness which we share of Thy constant presence and Thine abiding Spirit. We thank Thee for that deeper awareness which is ours as we come together to be with one accord in one place. And we thank Thee for the greater awareness which is shared by so many of Thy children in this season of the year, of Thy presence, Thy being. For as attention is turned towards Thee and away from those things which so constantly demand the attention of human beings in the fallen world of man. The fact that thou art close at hand begins to touch and to permeate the consciousness of responding ones with increasing vividness during the Christmas season. We thank thee that it is so, and because we have that awareness, we would stand before thee letting the evidence of thy presence be revealed both in the actual forms of the living of life, that which we do, that which we say, and also vibrationally in spirit, so that the reality of thy being may be made known near and far to the blessing of all who will receive it, all who will let their eyes be opened and their ears attuned to the voice, thy voice, finding expression through the words and through the lives of those who serve in thy name. We thank thee for the privilege of participating in the revelation of things divine on earth with all our brothers and sisters, whosoever, wheresoever, they may be who truly love and serve thee in the Christ. Amen. I am reminded of some words recorded in the 107th Psalm. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. How little recognition of the wonderful works to the children of men which the Lord brings to pass there is among the children of men. It is apparently so easy to look around and see so much that is not evidence of the wonderful works of the Lord. There is a blindness and a deafness in human beings towards the things of God. We have recognized that one of the principal reasons for human failure to be really aware of all that the Lord is constantly offering is impurity of heart. The fact that the heart is so full of the wrong things, so disturbed, so much in turmoil, that the individual is left with no facilities for touching heavenly things. Blessed are the pure in heart, 
for they shall see God. To so many, that has seemed such an impossible experience, except later on somewhere else. But we have our hearts here with us, part of our equipment as human beings. Surely, this being so, then if we are to see God, it must be while we are here on earth, while we have the equipment, the heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. There was a particular babe born over 19 centuries ago in the city of Bethlehem, who, according to the record, was recognized as being something special by certain ones. The way the story has been told and retold, it tends to appear to human beings today that there must have been something wrong with the vast majority of those who lived in that time because they did not perceive what was taking place. We have the story concerning the shepherds who were in the field and had a remarkable experience and were directed to go to the place where this babe had been born. Also, there were some men from eastern parts who also came on the basis of some apparently supernatural direction. They found the babe and worshipped. Later, according to the record, there were certain others, in the temple particularly, who seemed to be aware of some particular importance in the advent of this child into the world. But the vast majority of those who lived then were completely oblivious of anything special. If you, as you are now, had lived in that day, and you had had the opportunity of seeing this newborn babe, not because there had been any particular divine revelation in so far as you were concerned, but you had happened to come into the stable and had seen this mother and her child there, would you have had any recognition of something special about that babe? Of course, in the paintings, pictures, that come down to us, there was a light shining out of the manger, a halo probably on Mary's head. And indeed, it is true that there was light shining, but we remember the statement that the darkness comprehended it not. Has there ever been the occasion of the birth of a babe into the world when the light was not shining through that babe? There never has. There are those who have sensed it, probably in relationship to some child who was close to them. The parents of a child usually imagine that their baby is something very special. There is a very special light shining in relationship to their own. Because of love, attunement with things divine, there is an awareness of the light which shines. But it probably does not appear as though it were what we would call light in the ordinary sense. There was, of course, something very special about this babe which was born in Bethlehem. There is something special about every babe, but particularly so in this case, as we have come to know. But how could it have been known when the babe was first born? Only as there was a certain awareness already of things divine. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Looking at the outer appearance, Without any spiritual perception combined with the seeing, the vision stops short of those things which have real meaning. This babe, born in Bethlehem, at that point actually only had potential meaning. The mere fact of that birth of itself did not yet have any real meaning to the children of men. If that babe had not grown and matured, and come to the point of extending that wonderful ministry to mankind, would that birth have been remembered? I do not think so. 
It is because of what occurred later that the emphasis was placed upon the birth of the child. There's always that potential in relationship to every human being who was born into the world, the divine potential. Of course, in the case of this particular babe, that divine potential was supreme. But there is specific divine potential in relationship to each one. How seldom that potential is ever realized as an actual manifest fact. Because it was, in our Master's case, and because he was who he was, his life had meaning to all who have eyes to see it and hearts to comprehend it. But the mere fact of his being born into the world, standing alone, would have little meaning. It was because he came to the point of realizing the potential of his being on earth that the point of his birth has come to have meaning to the children of men. Let us see that in relationship to ourselves. No doubt, the parents of each one of us, when we were born, had a vision of something in relationship to the child, touching the potential. But our lives have real meaning only as we let that potential be realized. And how many of you feel that it yet has been? But our master came to the point of adequate maturity at the age of 30. Many of you are beyond that point in years. There is then no need to delay in the matter. There are some who on occasion have been inclined to imagine that they had lived too long on earth to ever realize their potential. But what a peculiar attitude when you come to think about it. Surely, the longer a person has lived on earth, the closer he should have come to realizing his potential. Unless his whole life was wasted, I would not like to admit that, even if it were true. No life need have been wasted, no matter how much apparent waste of time there may have been when one looks back on it. We have taken note of the fact that no matter what went before, it brought you to this moment, this point of opportunity. And actually, all that went before can be if the individual will let it be meaningful in relationship to this point. For that through which the individual passed along the way to come to this point can be of value. It is of value in the sight of the Lord, but it can be of value to the individual in relationship to the particular focus of responsibility which properly rests upon that individual in the service of the Lord on earth. Every experience, everything through which the individual passed can have meaning in relationship to that point of responsibility, because all those things, all those experiences, led to that particular specific place in the divine plan and purposes of God to which the individual is ordained. It is his background in relationship to that place. Does this contradict the instruction which has been given to let the former things pass away? No, it does not. We need to cease to be controlled and governed by things out of the past. But the things out of the past do connect us up with the world body of mankind to which the Lord offers salvation. And all the things through which we have passed, when we cease to be emotionally involved in them, have provided us with training along the way to enable us to function as we should in the place to which we come.
so many looking back are inclined to say, well, I wish it had worked out this way or that way, some other way. But no, it worked out the way it should to bring you towards your place in the divine design, if you will accept it. Of course, if there is a clinging to that which is past on the basis of feeling attunement with it, the individual can never come to his place. But the actual experiences themselves are valuable once the individual is clear emotionally from them. When you let your identity center in relationship to God and the things of God, the Spirit of God, and hold to that centering consistently, you begin to be in position to recognize how that background can be caused to have meaning and to be of value in relationship to the particular place into which you have come. If you do not begin to share in that vision, then all through which you have passed, certainly insofar as you are concerned at least, has been wasted. It is conceivable that your life may have provided something for someone else inadvertently, but insofar as you are concerned, until you come to the point where you are consistently identified with the Lord, you will still be identified with the things of the past, the former things, and will pass away with them. I would like to read a portion of the third chapter of Zechariah. And he shewed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Here, the human being, the responding one, is offered the opportunity to take a look at himself. And he shewed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. You are called to be priests and priestesses after the order of Melchizedek, serving the Most High God. And insofar as your own particular place of service is concerned, you are the high priest in relationship to it. You have a field of service, of ministry, which is your own, a place to fill which nobody else can fill, a job to do which nobody else could do. And in relationship to that, you are then the high priest. Or perhaps I should say you should be. Joshua, the high priest, relates to you when you are identified with the Lord, when you are serving the Lord and Him only. And it comes to focus and relationship to your spiritual expression nature. And here, Joshua, the high priest, the responding one, when he begins to be centered through his spiritual expression nature in the Lord, is standing before the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord, of course, is your God being. And in the world, you stand before your God being, either to obscure the angel of the Lord, planting yourself as a human being in front of him so that he cannot be seen, or you become the high priest, ministering before the angel of the Lord to reveal the angel of the Lord on earth. And Satan, standing at his right hand to resist him, Satan does stand at your right hand properly, but not to resist. The right hand, we speak of a right hand man, someone who carries particular responsibility in relationship to oneself, the positive expression. Of course, the human mind is that which carries particular responsibility on earth before the angel of the Lord. The means by which that which is of God can 
be expressed on earth. Satan stands at the right hand to resist. I think you have all found it to be so. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? How could you be a brand plucked out of the fire without being in the fire? And the fire is necessary for purification. If there is to be purity of heart, the individual must be in the fire, in the fire of God's love. And if there is response to the Lord, if the individual becomes identified in his place as the high priest, he is a brand plucked out of the fire. He will not be destroyed by the fire. And what was the word of the Lord to Satan? The Lord rebuked thee. He did not get into a battle with Satan. He did not start to argue with him. He said, The Lord rebuked thee. And what is the nature of our ministry? It is the ministry of the Spirit of Truth, which is the ministry of reproof, rebuke. The Lord rebuke thee. Reproof by reason of the fact that there is identification with the Lord. That which is of the divine expression is in control. Now, Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. That is rather a graphic picture of the human being, the responding one. The filthy garments which obscure the things of God on earth. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I said, Let them set a fair meter upon his head. So they set a fair meter upon his head, and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. The change of raiment the removal of the filthy garments comes not because the individual tries to be good, not because the individual tries to function the way he thinks he ought to function, according to his own ideas and concepts, but because the fire has been allowed to burn in the heart to purify it. When the individual is pure inside, then the filthy garments which are outside may be removed and a change of raiment placed upon him. The purifying of the heart allows all these things to take place, so that that which should appear in the outer expression may appear. But remember, let it appear according to that which is of the Lord's making for they are his garments, provided by him, and you may come into your place to walk among these that stand by. There is that place for each one. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. What do you perceive? What do you perceive? Do you remember when our master was speaking to his disciples 
and was questioning them as to who men said he was. They had some varied answers. Then he posed the question directly, But whom say ye that I am? Peter answered, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And our master emphasized the fact that when Peter spoke, it was not he that spoke, but the Father. In other words, human beings cannot recognize the things of God without coming into the position of the high priest, that is, in relationship to their own particular field of service, without identity in the right place, so that that which is expressing through them is of God. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. No matter how the human mind twists and turns, no matter how it tries to understand, no matter how it studies, no matter what it does, it cannot see the things of God of itself. It never can. The pure in heart see God. Those who are identified with God, who are coming into place as priests and priestesses after the order of Melchizedek, who was the priest of the Most High. As long as the heart is impure, as long as it is involved with identification with the filthy garments of mankind, the evil imaginations which are present in human hearts, it cannot see. The human being cannot see, cannot understand, cannot behold the things of God, for spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, do you see those works? Is that what you see? What do you perceive? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. How would you see him? Just with your mind? No, through the heart, the pure heart. Can you see the things of God actually? that are with you, present with you? I have brought out the point on many occasions as to how you would have recognized our master when he walked among men. How? Only the pure in heart could see him. He said, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. How many saw the Father? those who began to see the things of God round about them, because they are pure in heart, know that they walk on holy ground. How blind human beings are! Our Master preached the gospel, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Have human beings yet seen it? Have you yet seen it at hand, here? Spiritual things are spiritually discerned by the pure in heart. They are here with you, round about you, on every hand. Do you see them? What do you see? Do you see God? Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men not just figments of fancy, not something in some other realm somewhere, but right here. The Lord has called you to come into your place of service. Will you come? Or will the impurities of your hearts keep you from coming? Will you let the fire burn the impurities away so that you may come? and so that you may share in this Christmas season the vision of things divine, the vision of that which is born into the world, the vision of that which is here, waiting to be recognized and seen 
for what it is. When the individual sees it, his actions, his words, his feelings, his thoughts, proclaim that he has seen it. For what did those who had the recognition of the Christ child, the babe Jesus, do? They bowed before the babe, and they worshipped in humility before that made manifest on earth of the glory of God. But human beings will not worship that which they do not see. They try very hard to, but when you see it, then you may worship. Then your actions will proclaim that you know the wonderful works of the Lord, which are here. How blind human beings are. How blind they have always been. Why? Because their hearts were impure. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And unless we can see God, how can we truly serve him? We do not know where he is, who he is, what he is. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. If it is, the king is at hand. There is no kingdom without a king. The king is at hand. In purity of heart, let us behold him this Christmas season. Our beloved King, we would serve Thee on earth, and we know that we can only serve Thee in purity of heart. We would yield to the fire of Thy love, letting the flame burn in us, that the dross may be consumed, and that the pure gold of being may come forth, establishing purity of heart. We would open our eyes and our ears to see and to hear that which is with us now, even as the eyes and the ears of the shepherds were opened to the heavenly hosts all around them. We thank Thee that we may share in that vision Holy Father, I thank Thee for Thy children, wherever they may be in the world. Those who are turning to Thee, those who are yielding to Thy Spirit, I thank Thee for Thy blessing upon them, for Thy peace which is extended to them through the Spirit of Thy love and truth. I thank Thee for the way which is prepared before their feet, that each one may come into his or her place in the pattern of thy designing, to serve as a priest or a priestess of the Most High God, to glorify thee on earth now and forevermore in the Christ. Amen. What a brilliant and beautiful message here. Thank you, Martin Cecil. I know I've become more aware from listening to this of the purity of my own heart and feel new resolve to do the purification work so that I can see more of God, so that I can serve more of God as a gift to this world because this world needs more humans being of service to God so that we can all shift the trajectory of our shared reality. If you've enjoyed these messages and this divine download, then go ahead and like, share, leave a comment. We want to hear your thoughts. We are the ones bringing forth a new reality. And so let us move forward into this Christmas season, bringing forth the Spirit of Christ through ourselves. May you attune to the highest, maintain a vibration of love, and uplift your world by blessing all. Until the next time.